Welcome to the first lecture in Unit 8. In Unit 8, we will center around the topic of genetics. This is probably by far my favorite unit of the year, so I hope you enjoy this unit as much as I do. In order to start talking about genetics, we need to talk about a definition, our working definition for this unit. What that will be is three little words, and that is the study of heredity. If you have a family, much like mine, that loves to trace back their roots to figure out where we came from, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what this word means. In order for you to understand genetics, I need to make sure that you understand this word. So my definition for heredity is this. Every living thing has a set of characteristics inherited from its parents or parent, depending on what type of reproduction we are talking about. Along with watching this video as part of your homework, you also had a article about Gregor Mendel that you needed to read, and so I'll get to him in just a minute. The other part of your homework was finding and bringing in a picture of your family. In order to start talking about genetics, I like to have you bring in this picture so that I can start talking about this idea of heredity. You are a blending of your parents. You're half your mom and half your dad. When that egg and that sperm came together to make you, you became a blending of your parents. And so to start talking about genetics, I really like to have us start talking about it by looking at pictures of our family. So. After you get done watching this video, make sure you go and hunt for that picture and bring it into class for me, and we will use it in order to really get into this idea of genetic. Now, most of our understanding for genetics came from one guy, and that is Gregor Mendel. He set down the framework that became genetics. He didn't call it that when he was doing all of his research, but he laid the groundwork. His theories, his ideas started the ball rolling. And for that, he is known as the father of genetics. With his studies, he was an Austrian monk, and he spent a lot of time in the monastery's gardens. He started to notice certain things about the plants that he was taking care of, and it piqued his interest. The plant that he chose to base all of his studies on was a very easy plant to mess with, and that was the pea plant. He chose this plant for very specific reasons, and it led him to the different conclusions that we will talk about when you get into class. With the pea plant, what he focused on when he was doing his research was seven traits that were purely visible within the pea plant and the outcomes that the pea plant could have, and I'll get to those in just a minute. Before I get to them, though, I need to define what trait means. Traits are specific characteristics that vary from one individual to another. One of the traits that you could look out for yourself if you compared maybe me to you. I have wavy brownish hair that has some red in it and some blonde in it. You might be a total redhead. You might be very dark brown. You might be blonde. We all have hair. It's just what color our hair is. So that is a trait that is specific to us that I will vary from you. We aren't the same person, so we won't have the exact same trait. And so this is what he was looking at. The seven traits that Gregor Mendel looked at are as follows. When it came to the seeds of the different pea plants that he was studying, he looked at seed color, he looked at seed shape, and he looked at seed coat color. With the pea plant, there's always pea pods, so he also looked at pod shape, pod color. Then he looked at the overall view that you would probably notice the most if you were looking at the different pea plants. One of them would be the most obvious, and that is your flower color. He also looked at stem height, and he looked at flower position. All of these seven traits had two possibilities when they came to 
being evident on the plant. With these seven traits, one thing I need you to understand before we really get into this and what he actually looked at is how he actually manipulated the plants to get the ball rolling for his studies. With the pea plants, he used a process called cross-pollination. Back when I was in middle school, I know we had to do this. I'm not entirely sure if you guys have, but in middle school, I remember learning the parts of a plant. A lot of times, especially pea plants, especially plants that flower, that have flowers on them, they do a process called self-pollination. They have male and female parts and they can pollinate within the same plant. So there's no crossing. However, a lot of plants do something called cross-pollination. And Gregor Mendel took pea plants down this way. They will typically self-pollinate so that you should only get the exact same traits the parent plant had. He wanted to manipulate that and he did that by doing this process called cross-pollination. I'm sure you can already figure out what this means, but cross-pollination is when you use the sperm of one plant with a specific trait to pollinate the egg cells of another plant with a different trait. So for example, in this picture that I'm about to show you, it is the seven different traits that Mendel looked at. When it came to seed shape, you had two options. So these are the specific traits within the trait that he was looking at. Within seed shape, you had two what we call phenotypes. One of them, you could have a nice smooth seed shape, or you could have a wrinkled one. When it comes to flower color, you could either be purple or you could be white. With pod color, you could be green or you could be yellow, and so on and so forth. For flower at a position, you could be axle, meaning you're closer to the stem, or you could be terminal, meaning you're at the very end of the stem. All of these different traits that he looked at, all seven of them, you had two different phenotypes that were possible. Green, yellow, purple, white, smooth, wrinkled, whatever trait it was. So he used cross-pollination in order to figure out which trait was more prevalent. For example, say we took the trait seed color. Across that Mendel would do with the P generation, or we call this the parental generation, would have been this. He would have taken the two options, so yellow versus green, and he saw what happened. Say the yellow plant was your dad, and then this green plant was mom just to give them kind of mom and dad characteristics. When this was allowed to cross-pollinate, your new generation, and we call this the first filial generation, or simply F1, all of my offspring that I made were yellow. From these crosses, he was able to come up with two very distinctive conclusions, and I will talk about those when we get into class. Take another of his crosses that he did. Say we took plant height. My P generation would have been a tall versus short. When I allowed that to cross-pollinate, my F1 generation turned out to be all tall. Say we looked at seed shape. You have two options. My parent generation could either be smooth or wrinkled. When they are allowed to cross-pollinate, my F1 generation, my new generation, my offspring, my first filial generation, were all smooth. From all of these different crosses, and you could do it for every single one of them, he came up with some very important conclusions. And we will get to those in class, so I'll leave those for later. But he also figured out something pretty important, and we'll get into this more and more as we go through this unit. But one thing that Mendel came across when he was doing all of these different crosses, all seven of the traits, and studying them and collecting his data, he discovered that genetics is all about chance and probability. For the chance aspect, the traits you exhibit come from your parents but there's a big but it was by chance that your specific 
traits came out of the egg and sperm that came together. What makes you you all happened by chance. When we were talking about meiosis, we went through the different process by how eggs form and by how sperm forms. With eggs, mom only ever releases one egg at a time, sometimes two, and that's usually about it. One egg at a time. By chance, she released the egg that eventually became you when it met up with one of the millions of sperm that your dad was able to produce. But by chance, all of the characteristics that you show just happen to come together. So one thing he figured out is that genetics is all about chance and what two things come together, what egg and what sperm come together to make whatever it is that you are studying, whatever it is you are looking at. The other side of that is probability. Probability is a very mathematical term. It's about the only math that we ever do in biology, and that's probably why I like biology a whole lot more. But he also determined from all of his different crosses, and this is where we will be when I see you in class, with probability, you can predict the possible traits that might appear in the offspring. When you get into class, we will start from this idea of probability, and then we will carry on to the two very important conclusions that Mendel got out of the first part of his study into genetics. So for now, I will stop here, go hunt for that family picture, and bring it to class, and I will see you then.